Hi, Bill Mobley at the ANA meeting speaking with Shoma Sengupta from the Farber uh, Center and for the Mass General Hospital, Dana Farber Center. And so, Shoma, welcome, and we want to hear about your very interesting research. Um, hello. Um, so, basically, I was um, fortunate to receive an R25 NINDS during my residency um, at Beth Israel Deaconess. And the award was um, awarded to both Beth Israel and Children's Hospital Boston. And um, I worked on um, a project which involved membrane proteins, which is something very dear to my heart. My scientific training is um, with membrane proteins. Mm -hmm. And um, using the sort of genomic data that was obtained from Dr. Pomeroy um, and other colleagues, um, we saw that in the most aggressive subtype of medulloblastomas, um, that express photoreceptors, MEC, we noticed that there was a GABA5 signature. And Dr. Yun J. Cho, who was in um, Dr. Pomeroy's laboratory, um, was almost like a mentor to me in this project. And um, we started working on this um, uh, GABA5 idea. And um, I took my sort of membrane protein background and had a lot of fun doing this project. Good. And so, what did you find out? So we found out that um, GABA5 can be used to modulate the tumor. So we found a compound that um, inhibits the cells that contain GABA5 selectively over those that do not. And we were able to reproduce these effects in an animal model, but mm -hmm. we're still studying the in vivo effects. Very interesting. Is it an antagonist of this receptor no. subtype? Or? No, no, ironically, it's actually an agonist. Uh -huh. um, so what we think is happening is that um, the neuromodulatory properties of the GABA receptor and the drug um, keeps the channel open for um, longer than anticipated, mm -hmm. and then the drug binds, mm -hmm. um, let it, letting signaling molecules things in and then somehow the cells get destroyed in, in vitro. In vivo, however, the effects are not prolonged, so you do need a second agent, mm -hmm. like a chemotherapy agent. Very interesting. So are medulloblastoma cells immature then with respect to chloride gradients? I mean, are you exciting the medulloblastoma cells and killing them? What's your thinking about that? Okay, so we did um, quite a bit of electrophysiology, yeah. both on single cells yeah. and also an ex vivo uh -huh. tissue slices, uh -huh. and we found that um, uh, that basically there's a very high resting membrane potential, uh -huh. so it doesn't act quite the way as right. we would expect. And right. so Francis Jensen, who was the other mentor in this project, um, and her postdoc, um, Hong Yu Sun, um, did the beautiful electrophysiology work for this project. So the, the agonist, then how does it affect membrane potential? So basically it makes it, um, so at re resting potential, the right. membrane is very negative, right. and somehow it um, makes it less negative. Interesting. And then the drug binds, uh -huh. and um, then you basically have it open for much longer than cool. normal. Very nice. Beautiful work. Thank we you. hope it makes a real difference in the lives of these little kids with medullos. So, uh, Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you.